Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the butterflies. And here is a new Raising Monarchs video all about something that many of you have been requesting. What are the different types of pests and predators and how should we deal with them? Many who have been trying to help out the monarch have taken it upon themselves to also plant milkweed on their homestead. It really is the best way to help them. The thing is though, once you've got milkweed plants growing on your property, it's going to attract more than just the monarch butterfly. Plenty of other little critters come along for the ride. Or try to. Comments have been coming in over the years about these different types of pests and everything from tachnid flies to wasps to aphids and what do I do about them. So it's definitely a topic worth talking about and deserves its own video, but before we do it, let's lay out a few things. Number one, this is all coming from my perspective, which is a Michigan perspective. Some of you ask about different types of pests that maybe just aren't even in my region. Obviously, I'm going to know most about the situations that I've actually had to experience. Now, that doesn't mean I can't learn about things from other people's experience and find out about what some people recommend to do with these pests, but in that case, I'm just in the same boat as you are. I'm not speaking from some authoritative position on it because I've never even dealt with it. And I would never want to come across like I'm trying to teach you about something that you've experienced when I myself haven't. I think a great example of this is the tachnid fly. Tachnid flies are really an entire family of flies. There's many different species. And they are prevalent around the world, in fact. The thing is, I've been doing this, uh, this is my seventh year now, and I have never had a tachnid fly experience. So can I really speak on that? I haven't experienced it myself. But maybe there's a reason I haven't, and that is worth talking about. Okay, so here's the plan. Let's go out into the field and see what I can readily find here in Michigan. Then we'll come back here and we'll do a little bit of a debriefing on it. Both things that I found and some things that I didn't. Let's go. Now that I'm out here, uh, this is way warmer than I thought it was going to be. But, muscle through, right? Ever forward. Right here, we got our first one. First one I wanted to talk about. The milkweed beetle. I got note cards for the Latin names. <clears throat> Tetraopus tetrophthalamus. I'm not good with Latin. I'm not going to pretend to be. But it's the milkweed beetle. And it just so happens we've got these two here mating. Now the milkweed beetle, it's not really that harmful to your monarchs. I will say there's certainly a chance that if an egg is on your on your leaf that I don't see how these guys could mind munching down a little dose of protein. Some sources say that they don't, some sources say that they do. When I find these guys on my plants at home, I leave them alone. I'm going to collect them now though, so that way I can get some better video footage of them. Hey, they're still paired. Cool. Now why don't I remove them from my milkweed plants? I mean, they do damage the plant, right? Yeah, but not that severely. But we'll talk about all of this stuff when we get back. Let's go see if we can find some more. All right, here's number two, the milkweed bug. This is the large milkweed bug, and he's doing his favorite thing right now. He's checking out the seed pods. Oncopletus fasciatus. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Sometimes you see them on the plants as plump red nymphs. Uh, these will eat the milkweed seeds, eats parts of the plant. So we're gonna collect this guy too so we can talk about him at home. I'd like to set my tripod down, but uh, there's poison ivy just about everywhere here on the ground, so that's not happening. But I finally found some, been looking all day. Here are some aphids. Now when you wanna talk about aphids, it's like talking about dogs. There's so many different breeds of dogs. Some things do apply to all dogs, but there's a lot of differences. With aphids, there's so many species. But a whole lot of aphids are very, very much in love with milkweed. They find it delicious. Now right here, we can also see we've got some aphids that are attracting some ants. Why do we not want aphids on our milkweed? Number one, they will suck this thing dry. Aphids could be nicknamed the milkweed vampires. They suck in so much of that sap. The thing is though, that sap is really high in sugar, and so they need to drain a lot of it just to get the small amount of protein that's in there to help them build. In addition, Aphids are actual asexual reproducers. They're all female. And so one aphid, no matter which one it is, can make anywhere on average from 70 to 90 of itself. That many offspring. So if you see one or two or three, later on you could be seeing a lot more. Their life cycle is about 25 days too, so it doesn't take long. Now beyond that too, when it comes to the aphids, because they go through so much of the sap and they don't need all of that sugar, 
their excrement is actually very much full of sugar, and that's what attracts the ants. So another indirect way that the aphids actually harm your ecosystem here for the monarchs is that they will attract other insects too. The ants, they're attracted by the excrement, and ants will gobble up an egg no problem, or a caterpillar. But aphids are also very attractive to ladybugs, which will also eat small caterpillars or eggs. Aphids will attract wasps. Aphids will attract all sorts of other beetles, many different types of predators. So it really is something you don't want to see on your milkweed. Okay, now that we're back, let's talk about these guys and how harmful are they to both the monarch and how harmful are they to your milkweed in general. Let's start here. The milkweed beetle, Tetraopus tetraphthalmus. This is a beetle, and so its larva is grubs. And these will actually burrow into the soil and go in through usually the roots, though they can go in through the stem of the milkweed plant. That's also why you don't really see the larva. They're inside the plant, and that's also where they overwinter. Come spring, they burst out, usually through the stem, and there's the adult. They are primarily herbivores, which feed on the milkweed plant, exclusively. Now, let me be honest with you, I think these guys are kind of cute. Is anybody really speaking for them? These guys are just like the monarchs, where they need the milkweed plant to survive for their life cycle. So, yeah, plenty of people are raising monarchs, but is there any... Raising Milkweed Beetle series out there? Has anybody got a t-shirt with a milkweed beetle on it saying, Save the milkweed beetle? No. Is it harmful to the milkweed? My verdict is yes, but ever so slightly. They never really get into high enough numbers to cause severe damage. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I've never experienced that. Is it harmful to the monarchs? Well, even though they're herbivores, it is possible they might gobble an egg or even a small caterpillar for that little dose of protein. The thing is, they're not going out looking for it. So if it happens, it's probably just accidental. They're munching on a leaf and a caterpillar gets in the way. Here's another thing that's kind of cute about them. If you find them, put them in your hand and cup it up to your ear. They squeak. It's, so, it's like adorable. I say, leave them be. Okay, next up, similar in size to the milkweed beetle, and similar in common name, is the milkweed bug. But this guy's not a beetle. It's a true bug. Oncopeltis fasciatus. This one also is primarily a herbivore, but it feeds not just on the leaves, but also on the seeds and seed pods. For part of its necessary life cycle, it actually needs to take in things that are in the seeds. Now, that's why I kind of don't like this one. I grow my milkweed at home primarily as a source of milkweed pods. So that way I can just harvest them there and I have to go out and get them come fall. And these guys can harm my seed pods. They'll lay their eggs, too, and you might find their nymphs, these little red bugs, all over the seed pods. So are they harmful to the milkweed? Yes, but also this is kind of a slight harm. It's not that much. It's about as much as the milkweed beetle. They're not that devastating to the plant, but they are somewhat devastating to one or two seed pods that the nymphs get onto and the adults feed off from as well. So yes, sometimes if it's looking like it's getting out of hand, I will remove them, especially in the nymph stage. Are they harmful, though, to your monarchs? Again, similar to the milkweed beetle, not really so much. So how do you deal with it? For the most part, again, I'm going to say, let them be. I don't sit there and get rid of every single one that's on my milkweed plants. But if I do encounter the nymphs, I might do a little uh, reducing, thinning of the herd, so to speak. Okay, next one, aphids. Now, I think I, I kind of described plenty of this out in the field already, but just as a review, when it comes to aphids, they're going to be sucking up the sap, and they need the protein from it, but the sap from milkweed is much higher in sugar than it is in protein. So they've got to go through a lot of this sap to get the protein that they need. That means they're going to excrete plenty of that sugar. Their waste, then, is very sugary, and that's very attractive to ants. In addition to that, keep in mind, monarchs, with their antenna, they can detect all sorts of chemicals. And one thing that they can also detect is the secretion that these aphids give off. It discourages them from laying eggs on such a plant. So aphids on your milkweed, yes, that can cause you problems. That's kind of getting in the way of why you're planting the milkweed in the first place. You're trying to get monarchs to lay eggs on it, right? Well, the aphids are going to discourage that. So this is one that I do think you need to deal with. But the best tactic, and the most effective one too, squish them. Rub them out. And if you only see a small number of them, keep in mind, because they reproduce asexually, they don't need mates, every single one of them can lay plenty of eggs. And what seems to be just a few at first could, in just a couple of weeks, become a large, out-of-control problem. If you've got lots on there, 
Spraying them down with a hose gets them off the plant just fine. But if there's a really high infestation, just cut off the plant base where that infestation is and dispose of it. Your milkweed plant is tenacious. It will survive. Okay, now I didn't find any out there, and no surprise because they're pretty quick and fast, but tachinid flies. These are all from the family Tachinidae. What these guys will do is they will find a caterpillar and they will actually inject into it the eggs. So the eggs of the tachinid flies are inside the caterpillar and they hatch in there and the larva, the maggots, are eating and growing off of the internal parts of the caterpillar. If you find a caterpillar out there in the wild, depending upon how heavy tachinid flies are in your area, it could have already had tachinid fly parasitize it this way and be growing little tachinid flies inside of it. And you wouldn't really know. Here's some good news though, it's not that you have to avoid taking in caterpillars, you still can. Because once the tachinid flies are inside that caterpillar, it's not able to like expose and infect other caterpillars with the same thing. A tachinid fly would really have to inject the eggs into that caterpillar, so it's still safe to take them in. As the caterpillar grows, so do the maggots inside of it. And around fifth instar, though plenty can make it into the chrysalis, that's when the tachinid fly's larva emerge. When the tachinid fly maggots come out of either the fifth instar caterpillar or out of the chrysalis, they leave these stringy thread-like projections from it, which is the signature that tachinid flies were there. So these guys don't harm the milkweed plant at all, but yes, they are a parasite to the caterpillar and they cause it to die. It is fatal. Wrapping up a few more, uh, wasps, ants, things from Hymenoptera, that order, those things are predators. They will gobble down a caterpillar if it's small enough, and they'll definitely eat an egg if they find it. Last one we're gonna talk about, the earwig. From the order Dermaptera. I gotta be honest, I, I hate these guys. <laughs> like, ever since I was a little kid, I cannot stand earwigs. They smell. When it comes to the earwig, you don't have to worry too much about them. This one flew on me while I'm sitting here talking to you guys. And I didn't want to disturb it. Uh, earwigs enjoy... Earwigs enjoy nice, moist areas during the day. So they might be at the base of your milkweed plants. Sometimes I've also found them, though, like hiding in the freshly sprouting leaves up at the top of the milkweed. These guys will sit there during the day, and then at night, since it's mostly a nocturnally active insect, It'll walk around that plant, and if it finds any eggs or any other small insects, including caterpillars, they will eat them. So if you find an earwig on your plant, I mean, you can just flick it off. The earwig will go find something else to do. It's not like it primarily looks for milkweed plants to, to lay out in. It'll go find some other moist place to hide during the day and come out at night to find other things to eat. All right, so that's a brief, general crash course rundown in the different things that are around here in Michigan and are also in plenty of other places in North America. Now, what do we do about these? Well, look, first, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I don't want to be that guy who starts barking out orders to anybody. And over the years, too, plenty of you have given me advice, which have been great ideas, and I've incorporated also into my system. I see this more as like a give-and-take learning community. So for everything I'm about to say, it's not that you have to do it my way. You can deviate from whatever I'm doing if you like. It's your choice. First off, being maybe just a chemistry teacher, I'm a no-chemicals kind of guy. When it comes to pesticides, if it's harmful to insects, well, it's going to be harmful to the monarchs then as well. And so I don't use any. I've heard of all sorts of different treatments with like aphids, with other types of pests, using like rubbing alcohol or this or that chemical, Windex I've even heard. I stay away from all of that. I don't want any of that chemical residue on my plants and making it harmful to any butterfly that maybe is trying to land on there. Second, I am mostly a live and let live kind of guy. And so I try to do whatever I can to not have to kill anything in my milkweed patch. Again, there are exceptions. The aphids can really cause those plants problems. And as far as the milkweed bug itself, I don't want that to get out of hand. So when it comes to taking them out, if I feel the need to do that, I'm using my hand. I'm squishing them. you got to admit, it's pretty effective. But of course, if you have like a large infestation, cutting off the parts of the plants that are mostly infested, that's going to be the solution I would use. But now, from the concerns of the monarch butterfly and the caterpillars and the eggs, here is my overall solution to all of this. And some of you might already see this coming. Take the eggs and the caterpillars and raise them inside. Sometimes in our society, we might be looking for a magic bullet, something that just fixes it all. 
what's the one chemical that I can just spray on my milkweed and it doesn't hurt the monarch butterfly, but it hurts all these other things that I don't like? I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. But the closest thing I have to a magic bullet is to tell you to do what I've been showing you this whole time. Take the caterpillars and the eggs inside. Put them into a controlled environment. Look, if you have milkweed on your property, if you planted milkweed, you and I, we're cool. I am a fan of you. You are definitely helping out the monarch butterfly. But let's also be very clear and factual about this. Just because it's your backyard, that's still nature. In nature, the egg has about a 10% or less chance of making it all the way to adulthood. And if you're leaving your monarch eggs and caterpillars on your plants at home, even if they're in your backyard, that is still exposed to nature and all the dangers that are out there. Mother Nature is not kind to caterpillars. It's a brutal world out there. And so sometimes people are asking me, what do you do about these things? And my real answer is, I don't do anything about them because I've never had to deal with them. Because I take all of my eggs and all of my caterpillars inside. I raise them in the containers, which are my controlled environment. The only things that a caterpillar needs are, of course, oxygen, but also milkweed leaves. And that's it. In the containers, I can provide all of that. And at the same time, I have now completely eliminated the chance of tachnid flies, ants, wasps, hornets, anything really that would love to eat them or parasitize them getting to them. So I hope that this video and this discussion has helped kind of broaden horizons and you can use something from it. No matter what level you decide to commit to helping out the monarch, be it just planting milkweed in your yard, or trying to take some of these in and raise them all the way from egg to adult, or doing some intermediate kind of stuff and getting them to a certain point and letting them back out into nature, it's all up to you. But any of those options is helping. Just understand, depending upon what level you're at, the caterpillar still does have a certain percentage of risk. And one more thing, is there a monarch butterfly topic that we haven't really covered yet in some of these videos? Well, let me know about it in the comments below. Please understand, I can't make any promises, but I definitely listen to you guys. I read all of your comments, and what I'm hearing a lot about is what I'm going to try to do for you. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you for checking this out. I'll see you next time.